Finally, I'm, I, I'm in the canoe. My buddy kind of goes silent. So I turn around because I'm in the front. I had to turn around like, hey, uh, what's going on? And, he, and he's sitting in the canoe and he's kind of has his head down in his lap. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, hey, what's going on? You OK, man? He's like, he's like, dude, this thing like this thing's talking to me. The history of our Earth is so different from what we can imagine. Enjoy the journey. The Smithsonian, that if they found out about a large skeleton somewhere, was to go get it. I'm going to assume at least one person is right, because if one person's right, it busts the paradigm. It all goes back to the fallen chair. And the problem with the modern day church, they have a very truncated view of the supernatural. This backdrop is just pregnant with all kinds of meaning associated with this Mount Hermon event. And this guy defects from the kingdom. That's a big deal. All right, so welcome back to Blurry Creatures, Luke. We are an 80s-themed podcast. We talk Bigfoot, cryptids, ancient giants, Nephilim, you name it. And the reason I say that, Luke, is because the last couple episodes, things have been brewing, getting a lot more downloads. We moved up in the charts. We cracked into the top 150 science charts, and things are rolling, and we just can't say thanks enough. So a lot of new people are tuning in, so just kind of giving you a little bit of a... Uh, Update on what what you're tuning into. What what am I getting myself involved in? By, oh, by the way, the '80s theme doesn't really have anything to do with with cryptids, Bigfoot creatures. It's just ooh, we're kid, we're '80s kids. Yeah, we're '80s kids. So got to keep it. I enjoy keep it. Going. it. I mean, I, frankly, I enjoy it. I was, speaking of being a kid in the '80s, there was a photo that came out today of maybe it was today or yesterday of the Mighty Ducks. Not an '80s movie, early '90s movie, but we were kids still. Yeah, all grown up standing with Emilio Estevez. He looks like a midget, but he's not on skates. But man, it makes you feel old. It does. Joey the Cat, Gaffney, Banks, <laughs> whole crew. Yeah, get the knuckle puck, oh, and get it in there. That puck was a cheeseburger. You'd probably stop at Goldberg. I feel like when it comes to the '80s, if you had a hit movie in the '80s, you were set for life because they just keep doing remake after remake. Oh yeah, and look at look at Cobra Kai. Yeah, I know, right? I mean. Gosh, Ralph Macchio is still like the biggest cheese ball in the world. It's like still like it works now though because the eighties is endearing. But it was just I mean you ever seen that thing on YouTube where they they talk through karate kid as if Daniel's the villain? Yeah. And it actually works. It's really crazy. Yeah, it's like it, it always trips me out because it's like you could see it, man. You could you could totally see how it would work. Like anyway. No, it's great. I mean, well a lot of people are tuning in for the first time in what we do is we mash up like great 80s themes on our Instagram. We love making, remaking stuff that's uh, taking old posters, old movies, redo it. I hope you guys are enjoying that. And we throw some like 80s flavored music over everything. Just keep that vibe. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing. Bigfoot and 80s and cryptids. And, and Luke's, uh, maybe in the future, Luke's going to put together his own um, lost Bigfoot tapes. And he's going to be a 80s Bigfoot hunter. But maybe we'll keep that. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. Luke's got a skit closet, guys. If you've been on Luke's Instagram, the guy loves to dress up. So I've, got a, I've got a dress up box. It's a uh, Everybody has a different name for those things. You say <laughs> skit closet, some of the other funny terms for it. But yeah, man, never never be unprepared for a theme party. I love it, dude. You got to be ready. No, you're great, man. Like, I worked at a camp and I. Dude, that was a part. I, I literally went to college. I got a degree in recreation administration to run a camp that was what i wanted to do right. 
You're those guy. You're that guy throwing frisbees and going camping, and then and they called it college. And I remember those. I had some classes. I had a couple of rec <laughs> classes in college. college. Yeah. And I was like, "You guys are doing what? You guys go off your final and throw a frisbee? Man, this whole hey. like pre med thing is overrated, man. I know. Yeah, exactly. You want to know what one of my finals was, Luke? Speaking of ancient history, we talk about that all on the show. My professor ran Hearst Castle. I don't know if you guys know, but Hearst Castle is on the central coast north of San Luis Obispo. And the first day of class, he goes, all right, if, if you guys play your cards right, your final in this class will be to swim in Hearst Castle's pool. It sounds like a tough class. Yeah. <laughs> and, hey, also speaking of 80s, you had me thinking here. I had a class in college, an exercise physiology class, because that was pre-med in my undergrad. So I, was, I, wanted you to go were? Into, I wanted to go into sports medicine. That was pre-med. Yeah. Dang. But I had an ex-phys class, and it was like an intro to ex-phys, and, and the teacher was just this character. And one of the required things we had to watch was, this is going to be real 80s, is Pumping Iron by Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> which is phenomenal. I mean, if we're talking eighties and it was like, a, it was required material for this class. And so I remember we're sitting through like, I think we had to break it up to, in two different classes, but we watched pumping iron. I love it. And we paid for that education. So this is uh pumping iron. We'll have to redo that poster at some point. Oh my gosh, dude. Arnold. The stuff, yeah. the more obscure eighties stuff. I don't know if you're out there listening and you're like, Oh, I get that one. Like we just put a power glove meme on our Instagram and, some people got it. Some 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 people are like, "This is the best thing ever." There's this is so nerdy. I don't even know how to. With the how power to glove, man. I remember when the, we didn't have that. We were poor, <laughs> but like I was. I wanted, didn't have it. I always wanted a power glove. I just remember uh, Fred Savage on The Wizard, the movie. Remember? Yeah. I well, do. today we have a great show for you guys. Just a little fun B roll because there's a lot of new people listening to the show. Seriously, can't say thanks enough. You guys are sending us a ton of messages. A lot of good. Uh, great things to just pour through. We got some, we got some videos of an underground secret military base yesterday. It's getting fun. It's getting weird. We don't want to end up disappearing one day. So be careful what you send us. Yeah, I like to stick around. <laughs> anyway, we have a great uh, another encounter episode. Our friend Adam from up in Canada, eh? Oh, take off, eh? He uh, sent us this message, and Luke, I like this encounter story. We don't usually bring on everyone who's had a big bigfoot encounter because let's just be honest it's turning into quite a crazy uh podcasting jungle of everyone and their mom having a bigfoot encounter and going on a podcast but this encounter adam describes multiple things in one encounter like the lights we talked about that with ron moorhead time slowing down and mind speak so we're getting we're we're (laughs) getting I know some people are like, yeah, man, yeah. your show your show gets weird. But this is a great one, man. Well, this we, is like, well, we talked a bit about time slippage with Tony uh, Marco from the Confes- Confessionals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not that I'm familiar with the situation, but you know, Fritz Fritz Zimmerman also brought this up, so it's not a new topic necessarily. We've talked about it a few times, but remember, Fritz basically said he lost a bunch of time, and you know, I don't know if he time traveled or whatever, but I mean, it's it's a mind grenade. Yeah. So we're going to talk to Adam about his Bigfoot experiences up in uh, Ontario. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Welcome back to Blurry Creatures. Today, our, our our guest is Adam up from Ontario. He's got a great story. He sent us a message, and Luke and I were like, "Man, this is a uh, this is a good one. This this encompasses a lot of the things we've been talking about on the show, but it all kind of happens in one or two uh, encounters." And that's when I was like, "Man, this is a great encounter. We have to have him on the show." So I won't I won't go too into detail. I'll let you kind of share your story. So maybe walk us through that night or that day and where you were and a little backstory and then go into exactly what happened. For sure. So my family, uh, we purchased a a property in uh, Northern Ontario in a town called Halliburton. And it's just outside of Halliburton. And uh, there's a lot of cottages up there, a lot of lakes, like, you know, you can drive every five minutes, there's another lake. So it's really nice. So we've had the, the property for about 20 years and uh, we don't have a cottage on it, but we've been camping like all the time. Right. So 
we just love going up there, camping, enjoying nature. Property next to us, uh, there's no cottage. So it's kind of like a double lot. It's pretty big. And then we have one neighbor on the side who has a cottage. And then across the lake, we're kind of at a narrow part of the lake. So from, from our dock, basically across the lake is maybe 200 feet. So on that side of the lake, it's actually, most of it's privately owned and it's a really large area of land. So the government has deemed, you know, so many cottages can be built on that side or so many cottages can be built on the lake. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, they can't put any more cottages so that the, the land across from us is virtually untouched. So it's, it's just very squatchy. bushy. Yeah. Squatted. <laughs> very squatchy. So basically, <laughs> uh, you know, we went up one, one weekend, bunch of friends. The first night, uh, a couple of my friends were on the dock. They're, they're just playing around. One of the, one of the girls there had her phone or sorry, her flashlight. And she starts shining it across the lake and she's shining it straight. And all of a sudden she'll get, you know, a light flashing back. Right. So I guess she's like, okay, whatever. It's kind of weird, but just one single light. So she, uh, she, uh, starts moving the light around quite a bit, you know, basically 20 feet away in three different areas. And then she gets three lights back in those same areas. And that's when they're like, okay, well, you know, that's not, if it, if it was people, how could they be over there and space that out perfectly? Right. So. And Adam, before I, I don't want to cut you off for a second, but you're just to clarify, you're saying that like across, there's no, there's not houses or cottages yeah, or lake no. houses or people camping. There's not exactly. No, it's so it's, it's pitch black. Like, the only light, like the sky is pretty well, all the light you see. Mm. It's, That's kind of crazy. The stars are out. It's super bright. So is it so. like perfect, perfectly mimicking what you're doing? Yes. Yes. Mm. Mm. Wow. Nate, are you jealous? <laughs> I'm just thinking of that movie Interstellar right now. <laughs> I'm, surprised, I'm surprised your head went there and not like just probably just little people out there. Making cookies in a tree, and <laughs> no, man. I just want to make sure that we clarify that. Like, I know you, what you were leading up saying was that listen, like, pretty remote, not yeah. people on the other side. It's it's yeah, forest. Like, we yeah. we virtually have never never seen anyone over there. Like, the the owner like lives way way deep into the bush. So, and there's no docks. There's no nothing. So, so that that was the first night. The next day, so I wasn't there when that happened. It was just the two girls. So the next day we wake up, you know, we get out of the tent, start our day around the fire, cook some breakfast. The girls are saying, telling us what happened, right? So we're like, okay, <laughs> sure, whatever, you know, like, like I don't, I don't not believe you, but okay, let's let's test it out later tonight. So me and my buddy, you know, the day goes on. Now it's nighttime. We get the fire going. We're hanging out by the fire. So I said, okay, let's go down to the dock and let's see if we can get this thing to, uh, to do it again. So we go back down, we start playing with the light. Sure enough, starts blinking back at us. Right. We start moving it again. Same thing. And then once me and my buddy, uh, we saw that we're like, okay, I'm I'm gonna go in the canoe. We gotta we gotta get up to the close enough to the shoreline and see what's really going on. So so the girls they they weren't they weren't really interested. <laughs> canoes, you know how tippy canoes can be. So I was like, okay, this is a two man operation. Hmm. Yeah. So we, <laughs> we get in the canoe. We start paddling. Again, it's only like it's 200 feet. It's not too far, but. We get right up to the shore. We start going back and forth, maybe, you know, 100 feet. We go down. We come back up. We shine the light. We don't, we don't see anything, right? 
but now we start hearing this like loud, heavy crunching in the bush. And like, we're, we don't want to get too close to the shore. <laughs> so we're like, you know, staying at least, and there's a lot of trees and fallen dead stuff. So, you know, we're at least 20 feet from the shore. And as we're, as we're paddling, we just keep, we keep hearing this crunching. And I'm like, I said to my buddy, I'm like, what the hell could be moving that fast? And, you know, and, and mm. again, if it's, you know, if it's a bear or something, the bear would either show itself or just run away. Like it, it was just so weird. And, you know, we, we keep pacing back and forth. Finally, I'm, I, I'm in the canoe. My buddy kind of goes silent. So I turn around cause I'm in the front. I had to turn around I'm like, Hey, uh, what's going on? And he, and he's sitting in the canoe and he's kind of has his head down in his lap. And I'm like, I'm like, Hey, Hey, what's going on? You okay, man? Hmm. He's like, he's like, dude, this thing, like, this thing's talking to me. I'm like, what do you mean talking to you? So, and my, and my buddy, like he's, he's had some close calls in his life. So he's kind of, he's kind of susceptible to, he's open to these things. Right. So, and, uh, he starts, he's, I said, well, so what is it saying? He's like, it's saying that, uh, that there was some kind of an accident on that side of the, of the forest and somehow whatever this thing was got the blame but it wasn't really their fault That's crazy. Is it like in English or is it just like he's thinking these things? I'm guessing it's in English. Um, but I mean, there's no conversation. It's all in his head. Right. So, you know, however he's interpreting it, but he could sense that there was this, you know, this thing, I guess I can ask him if it was, if it was another person's voice mm -hmm. or if it was his mm -hmm. voice, just telling him, I have a feeling it was just his interpretation on you know whatever message he was getting so after that we start feeling this like energy like darkness and it's i mean it's pitch black everything's dark but we we feel like we're almost being pulled towards the shoreline like this feeling of like like almost like a magnet like there's a force there so i start feeling it and that's when i'm like okay you know i for me i like I like I like to dip it dip my toe in the water, but I don't want to dive right in, right? So to say, so I'm like, okay, I gotta get I gotta get out of here. This is just getting too weird. Like my my buddy's having this conversation. Do you think it's the big? Do you now, think it's a Bigfoot communicating with you at this point, or what do you think? At this point, like when I heard, when I heard it when I heard the crunching and how quick it was moving and the speed, it crossed my mind. You know, Bigfoot. I mean, I, it, it just, it just added up kind of like, and again, it was, I wasn't like thinking too much at the time either. It was just all happening so fast. Right. Mm. So again, time, time felt like it was slowing down. We're in this canoe. I'm, I'm starting to make a decision like, okay, we got to book it. And we're not like, we're really not that far away, but it felt like something was holding us there. Right. So my buddy's like, yeah, it wants, it, it wants us to go and help it or, or, or him, or I don't know, whatever this thing was, wants help. I'm like, no way. There's no one <laughs> out here. Yeah. We're yeah. not getting out of this canoe, buddy. So I started paddling and I'm in the front. So I'm like paddling backwards now. And my buddy's still kind of out of it. He's not paddling. So I'm like, I'm going to get him out of here, whatever. I did all the paddling, but every, every paddle I paddled, it was like, I paddle two strokes and I'd only get one stroke <laughs> or like I'd be pu pulled back a stroke. So it was like, you know, being on a treadmill, 
Hmm. And it, and it, it's, I swear it felt like it took like 20 minutes to get back to the dock when, you know, it's, it's a two, two minute paddle over to begin with. That's so, crazy. That's yeah. wild. I mean, at least, you, at least, at least, you know, since it wasn't speaking French, it wasn't from Quebec. <laughs> yeah. So when you get back, do you guys have any, back to shore, finally, yeah. do you guys have any kind of like debrief with each other or is it just like too weird? Do you guys just like, we're yeah, not, no, we're not we, going to talk about we, this. No, we totally debriefed. We got, so the rest of our friends were obviously at the fire, at the fire pit. So we come back, we're like, we're like, we got to tell, we got to tell these, our other friends what, what the hell happened. So we have this full debrief with them and we tell them, some of them are like, yeah, you guys are crazy. Some of them are like, I'm like, Hey, you guys saw the lights too. So, you know, there was something going on over there. So my one, actually my sister-in-law was there. So she's there and she's like very skeptical. She's like, no, no, there's no way. Like you guys are just cooking up this story to spook everyone. Right? So, <laughs> this isn't a bad idea. I mean, retrospect, <laughs> right? I'm not, <laughs> you know, I, obviously we all, we all make jokes, but this is no joke. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be on this podcast if it was, you know, a joke. So we all go to bed. This is where it gets a little crazier. We go to bed. We're all in the tent. It's like an eight man tent. Everyone's snoring. My sister-in-law, she, she's got to go pee in the middle of the night. Right. So, you know what that's like in a tent, get out of the tent. She gets out of the tent. She sees this like glowing light down by the lake. And she's at first, she's like, okay, it could be a boat. And the light's not moving. I'm like, she's like, okay, I know it's not a boat. It's not moving. So she comes back in the tent and wakes me up. So I'm like, you know, I don't know. It was like three in the morning, I guess, four in the morning. I wake up, she's, she's freaking out. She's like, there's this light out here, come out and check it out. I'm like, like, oh man, I've had enough. Like, right. I've already, I've already been through enough tonight. So I was like, you know, and I was super sleepy, but I did poke my head out of the tent and I seen like, I didn't see the actual orb, but I seen the glowing from it. And it was like a, she said it was like a pinkish yellowy kind of ball. And it was just sitting like basically right at the shore, still above the water, not actually on the land, but like basically right there. And it wouldn't really, it wasn't moving, right? So she's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, honestly, just, just go pee and just forget, just forget about it. Like, don't, I'm like, don't mess with it. Cause whatever was in that bush wasn't nice. And if this has anything to do with that, I just was like, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to bed. I suggest you do it. Cause I'm not coming after you. If you go down there, I'm not coming after you. If you go down there. The second time, so this was the first time that happened was uh, around 2013. And then like a year or two later, we were back up there. And this was mostly just family. I got I got uh, three brothers. So brothers are up there with us. We're all up there by the fire. You know, when you're when you're in the bush, you got a big blaze going, you know, the light kicks out so far. And you got, you know, 50 foot radius, say, of, of what you can see visibly. Otherwise, you know, beyond that, it's just black. So we're all sitting around the campfire and we start hearing more crunching and it's coming from behind me. And we're kind of looking around and we're like, okay, it's nothing. Then all of a sudden hear like a huge thud, like a huge log or something was thrown, right? It was so loud. I'm in my chair. I, I bolted out of my chair 
the same time I bolted out of my chair because it was right behind me. I'm looking across and my, my brother's sitting there and his face just went like this. And I'm like, I'm like, Hey bro, what the hell? Like we turn around, we all turn around after nothing's there. And I'm like, I'm like, brother, what did you see? And his face is just like, I'm like, was it a bear? What, like, what was it? Right. So he goes, all I saw was like the silhouette of shoulders, like tall, like, like a person. And that's when I was like, okay, <laughs> everything kind of clicked then. And, you know, with the previous story and then this, and, you know, we, we were like, wow, okay. We definitely got a, a squatch in the area or something hmm. like, so how, how many, how many years, how many years apart? Or months or years apart of these two? Uh, it was about two years apart. So two years. So something's yeah. up there as a lake. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, north, just north of Halliburton is like Algonquin Park, and it's huge. It's like it's like 3,000 square miles of, of, you know, protected provincial So parts. you guys were so, going back and not having experiences between those two experiences? Between Yeah, like we've been up there obviously multiple times after, and – we haven't, we haven't had anything that crazy. I mean, my dad, my dad goes up there. He's got a, he built a little, like really small cabin, like a one man cabin. Hmm. He's got motion lights. <laughs> yeah. I said, dad, did the, did the squatch ever knock on your door? <laughs> He's like, no, but the lights go off and on and you know, stuff like that. Man, this is a spooky story. Like I have so many questions. Like I'm here alone at my house right now. And I just swore I heard voices in my basement and I freaked out. So if anyone's listening, I'm sure they're a little bit like, whoa, on edge. But <laughs> this is this is spooky. So th- I, my first question is when your buddy and you go back to, from the canoe to get off the, get from, away from the island, is he still kind of in a daze? Is he still kind of like squa- squatch yeah, drunk yeah. or whatever you want to call it? Like, Yes. Yeah. He's very like, yeah, like like in a trance or hmm. I don't know why. Like it did. It only got him like, you know, I was in the canoe, too, and. I don't know. I guess it picks if it's going to pick someone, it's going to pick the right person. Or I don't. Has know. your buddy done anything like I don't know? This might be TMI, but um, gone to like psychic or anything like that before in his life, or anything like sh- set himself up he, for stuff like that. I I don't know if I don't think he's ever done the psychic thing, but he's uh he's a very spiritual guy for sure. Like he's had some. Th- you know, close calls in his life. So, um, he's had a very close call, like, you know, in the hospital deathbed type of stuff. Mm, So mm. he's always said after that instant, you know, something could, uh, something kind of change, you know, where he's, I guess he's more open to that stuff. I want to ask a question too, because Nate likes to bring this up a lot, but the times that you did have experiences were there, were there women with you? Because, in the in-between times, did you also have women? Because I think Nate likes to allude to this, and I don't know how much I buy it, but he thinks that that Bigfoot, <laughs> whatever it is, <laughs> likes to show up when there's women around. Um, Bigfoot, and he Bigfoot likes the ladies, guys. Yeah. I don't blame him. <laughs> no, uh, the first time was uh, it was two two men, me and my me and my buddy, and then three women. So we were outnumbered. <laughs> See. There it is. And the second time was more, it was more men, but there was one, one woman there. Well, you know, Patty was a woman. So maybe she just likes saying like meeting other, other ladies. I don't know, Nate. Um, Well, often. Yeah. It's just, I I think they can perceive a threat. Obviously if they can put thoughts in your head, they might know your intentions. And I think a lot of men are, their first reaction is shoot this thing. (laughs) Right. Like, most dudes in the middle of the woods probably have a gun on them, right? I would say, mm-hmm. especially up in Canada. I mean, you guys have, well, you have firearms on you or no? Um, in cottage country, you know, there's not too many guns going around. I mean, it's kind of frowned upon if you're just shooting guns off. Yeah. But, you know, it depends, it depends how rural, like if, you know, if you're not around a lot of people, it, then, you know, Canadians love to shoot things. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, here's the thing. Like, so I, I like this this conversation about time because our last guest, um, Tony, told a story mm-hmm. about a guy who, you know, military guy he goes out and they burn this UFO, and then when they're coming back to the base, it was like he was in the future or he was in the past. One of the two, they were kind of colliding. And so my thought is, when you're shining, when you're shining the lights in into it. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're going through time and they're just you're just seeing your own lights. It's you're not seeing a reflection. You're seeing your own flashlight in time at <laughs> once. So it's like the past and the present. And the reason Luke I brought I brought up Interstellar is cuz you guys remember the I don't know if you've seen the movie but they talk about the Tesseract. And the Tesseract is that enormous cube grid-like structure in the movie. Mm-hmm. And you can communicate via gravity five dimensions as opposed to four and you can see past present and the future all at once i love that movie but maybe these lights flashlights it's kind of like a tesseract you're seeing in time them going and then coming i don't know that's that's the vibe i got it doesn't sound like a reflection why would there be like mirrors in the middle of the woods or anything that can reflect off of it's i don't see that and then and then you're going through a time warp it sounds like you're you're trying to canoe out of this thing What's going on? It's like to this day, it's it tops all of the craziest things I've seen in my yeah. life. Like there's no there's no other story I can tell that that was you know that real to me. And you know I've I'm I'm I'm, I'm definitely open to believing in the unexplained. And you know when when you go through that thing yourself, and you're like, D- is this really happening right now? And you're like. The part part of you wants to push the envelope when you're in it. You know, there's a bit of curiosity there, but then, you know, the vibe we got was like, okay, we've gone far enough. Let's let's boogie. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't want to, we didn't want to mess with it anymore. <laughs> yeah, Nate, I, I see you're saying. I, I I don't know if I buy that as much as this isn't the first story that we've heard. And I'm sure it'll be the last where there's this light phenomena that sort of surrounds experiences with Bigfoot whether it be orbs or lights in the forest or UFO kind of activity surrounding these Bigfoot encounters. I mean, this isn't the first time we've heard that. So I tend to wonder like two things here, and this is just thoughts, is that when we have things that I think we deem or we perceive as frightening or scary or traumatic, I think we all have had experiences where we feel like time slows down. Whether you're like a car accident or you have these these moments where you can see every little thing, right? It feels like it's super slowed down. So I don't know that maybe that's what's happening. I, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but thinking like, do when you have these experiences that your senses are super heightened because you're frightened, I feel like you tend to remember these things and in, in, it's almost like you, cl- you click the, the frame rate up, you know, 10 times. So you're remembering all these different things. And so it appears like time is, is slowed or, or whatever, but yeah, yeah. It's interesting to me because this is like this totally falls in line with when we're talking to people about you know the Sierra Nevada sounds and these orbs and these lights and sounds that, with these Sasquatch experiences. So, I mean, perhaps it's a dimensional thing, like Nate's saying, or you have these reflections, or I guess it depends where you land. If you're in the Dr. Jeff Meldrum camp and you land and this is a gigantic pithecus and it's just a giant animal, then it's tough to explain any of the any of the phenomena, right? But if you if you land in that, there's something you know spiritual or maybe even supernatural about Bigfoot, then I think the exp- explanation for this kind of stuff tends to be a little more straightforward. Even though you don't know what it is, it's, it's like, okay, this makes sense because there's a very supernatural or you know element to, to this creature, right? I agree with you, Luke, to a certain extent, but I think I want to push it a little bit further because I've heard the stories of people say they think that Bigfoot can, when they appear and disappear, it's that they can stop time and move out of it, and then you don't remember so you're seeing the creature, it stops time somehow, and then it, 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 it appears to the human like it disappears, but it's actually just left the scene, and you didn't, you didn't realize that three minutes went by, right? So you hear those stories, and then you hear this story like, it's, like you're traveling into some sort of time-altered space. We hear that about like, you know, how you can bend gravity and some of these you know, alien tech have that ability to kind of use bend space and time but when i really think about all these stories i wonder if bigfoot can manipulate the time i find this fascinating man because it's like these it reminds me 
of the the old Celtic tradition of there's these thin there's these thin places, right? There's these places that that they believed existed where the the veil between dimensions or between and a lot of times in, in a religious standpoint, the veil between your earth and heaven or this other dimension is very thin. And I tend to wonder maybe if this if this place in the lake is a thin place where the the veil or the or the material between a dimension is actually very thin, and so you have some kind of crossover. Let me ask you this though: when the, when this is first happening, is, is your friend or you you automatically go to Sasquatch, or what is your first reaction to to this? Does it feel like like it's dark? Like is it dark spiritually? Or no, it wasn't. It wasn't too dark at first. It wasn't dark at first. It wasn't. And again, we you know we're in the moment, so there wasn't a lot of thinking it was just like experiencing it you're like you know you're not really you're not you not have time to be like okay what is this like you kind of are but it's just unexplained because it's not there's a lot of things not adding up and it wasn't until we stopped when we stopped pacing back and forth in the canoe that's when and and then my my friend when i realized he was like down and speaking to this whatever it was <laughs> that's when we started to feel like that energy then it then it all kind of became dark at first it was like a curious energy kind of like like playful and then when we heard the crunching you know that was like okay there's something there's something in here <laughs> and then when we stopped that's when it really kind of got dreadful like dark and and like we were being drawn to this hmm. to this energy so once your brother had this experience and where he saw, was that when you worked backwards to thinking it was Bigfoot or at that moment in the first experience, did you think this is Sasquatch? Definitely the first time it wasn't clear, clear Bigfoot. Then when my brother saw that, definitely it's, I was like, okay, that like that whole experience, the, the, the most thing I take out of it as Bigfoot is the, is the walking in the bush, like covering, you know, massive amount of feet in it's like he's just leaping in there crunch and then like we're paddling and then another crunch so that part for sure to me was bigfoot and then all this other stuff when i started listening to your guys show and hearing you know a lot of the stuff related to bigfoot stories that's when it all kind of came together right the first half of the story when she sees the lights is it like the size of a volleyball, basketball? What 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 are the size of them? Yeah, she's in around almost two feet, like a two foot ball. Big. And it was get and was giving off like I saw the light from way up by the tent, and I, it was like lighting a good amount of area around it. It was just like breathing, almost like. So it was like pulsating, like aspirating. Now I've, yes. I've heard this before. Like it aspirates, like it's breathing. Yep. Right, you have this. Yeah, and the colors. She said the colors were changing. As it's breathing. Do you think that's the Sasquatch or that's something protecting the Sasquatch? So she she said she believes that that was protecting us from something. Oh, ah, that's how she that was her take on. It's benevolent. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a it's like that's a protector, wild, the forest protector. And Luke, we hear these stories all the time, and we've watched a bunch of information about people going missing um, in places like this, and they just disappear. Maybe, well, maybe that's what's happening. Maybe when it was trying to draw them in to help 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 maybe you don't know i mean we don't have to talk to these people to disappear because they don't come back <laughs> yeah. or if they do come back they don't come back alive yeah right but it makes you wonder like i mean is are people being drawn in and then so we're glad you're here adam <laughs> yeah 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 i mean it's it's got that kind of stranger things vibe where you can get sucked into the yeah. upside down and then you're you're there but you're not there and the reason i think my theory on the flashlights you i mean when you describe the flashlights it's like they're being reflected perfectly back. Yeah. It's yeah. not like a mimic, like, oh, I shine the light, you shine the light over here. And yours, you shine the light for two seconds and they shine it back for four seconds. It sounds like it's identical. It, it was identically, wherever you pointed it, you'd get it identically back where you pointed yeah. it. But there was a break in between, like there was some time in between. So, you, you know, if you did three blips, then there'd be some time and then finally you'd see it boom 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 and you're like whoa what the hell is I that? think you were in a place this is my theory you were in a place where time the past the present and the future was all interacting at the same time 
it's <laughs> it's crazy but i mean there's something going on across that lake and there's a lot of history up there too i mean a giant mound is there a big mound out there <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me i actually we have a mound here in uh where i live in scarborough in uh close to toronto who knows what's under that thing, but yeah, that's what I was going to ask if there's any like burial grounds or anything just kind of weird that's, spiritually. Well, that's, that's what they, that's what they call it, but I don't know. I don't know if I believe it. Well, Ken Walker, uh, one of our couple guests ago was talking about the mounds out and up in the deep parts of Canada. And, uh, he said he found one, a remote one, and he's going to try to go mm-hmm. excavate it. Luke and I might go tomorrow night to a mound 45 minutes from our house. And explore nice. that. In, in, yeah, we are. <laughs> Let's just do it, Luke. We're going. It's, it's, if this is our last transmission, it's been a good one, Adam. <laughs> last episode. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, Nate and Luke ended up uh, a giant mound. So, so what? So what now? Do you have you? Are you afraid to go back up there? No, I mean we go again. If I go back up there and I stay up, you know, you know, when we were younger. We we're staying up later. You know, that 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 forest. Once it gets a certain hour, you know, it feels like anything can happen. And it's so, it's so magical, so mysterious up there. And it's just a, a an awesome energy. Like it's good. It's good. And ba- like, however you want to, whatever kind of time you want to have, uh, I think it has a lot to do with your energy too, to what you bring to the table. Like, you know, if you're very curious and you go looking for it, you might just find it. Yeah. <laughs> So I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt I can, you know, I would, something else could happen up there for sure. If I want. And that, and that goes back to what we were talking about, Luke, before I think females bring a different energy to the woods than men. Like they, they're not going into the woods trying to kill things. I mean, there's, there's female hunters, but for the most part, right, Luke, like they're, they don't have an agenda. They're just going for a walk or a run or whatever. And sometimes men are, they're looking for something, right? Right. Or. They've got an agenda. It just, makes it, it just automatically makes it. Have you seen, this is so ridiculous, but have you seen the Be a Man Instagram page? <laughs> yeah, I love, I love like, them. Go into the woods, find Bigfoot, yeah. shoot him, be yeah. a man. You know, it's like, that, <laughs> it's kind of what, like maybe that is what's, what. Make the best out of his, yeah. out of his fur. <laughs> go, into, go into the woods, see a light, go find it, yeah. disappear, be a man. I was I was a man up until a certain point, and then I paddled the paddled my ass. Out of I would too. Uh, it's interesting. It's just interesting. I think this uh, this experience is crazy, it, it, but it isn't. It's so in line with things that we've heard, although in a weird way, a little more predictable. That, that makes sense. Like there's these things that that seem to happen in shared experiences like this. That even though they're independent experiences, they have a lot of commonality, which renders me to think these things there's something definitely going on in those woods good thing you stayed on that canoe man <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i i think most people who have a sasquatch experience just have one of these things yeah. they don't see the lights they don't have the, the telepathic you know things going in your brain they don't have log throwing and rock throwing and then it shows itself yeah. this is like a golden encounter you guys had I mean, you got all of them every every episode i've been kept saying to myself okay you gotta you gotta you got to reach out to oh, these guys. I appreciate it. Is this the yeah. first time like sharing it in the public? I would say the public, other than like, um, yeah. I mean, on a uh, for sure on on a podcast. Sure, yeah. I'm never like, you know, I you can put my full name on here. I I don't really care what people think. I know it happened. I I will tell anyone, you know, strangers or friends, family. Like, I'm very open about it because hey, I know what happened and. You don't you don't want to believe it, then don't believe it. But when are you going back to the lake? I'll be going uh definitely July, August. All right. Let us know. Let us know if uh if if Patty's got her got her summer bod ready. <laughs> <laughs> before we before we go, we kinda of did this in reverse. We ask all our guests like what, what they think Bigfoot is and we're gonna continue that uh tradition <laughs> now that uh you've had some time to process this. Adam, what do you think Bigfoot is? So I I definitely think, you know, the fact that people see him and he dis- disappears so quick, you know, or he's walking and then he goes behind a tree and then he's just gone, like poof. So there's definitely like a, a, a time thing there or teleport- teleportation. Like, does he just, does he turn into an orb and just vanish? Like, it kind of makes sense. Like, you know, no one can catch him. No one can, 
you know, you get a glimpse of a glimpse of him, if that, and then he's just gone. So I think, I think there's definitely something more than just, you know, this animal or an ape, you know, like, I mean, come on, we, there's all these other animals, bears, like, even if you go into the bush, you don't see a, you see a bear very rarely, you know, and they're very elusive and they'll hear you mile away or smell you and they'll be gone. But, you know, people catch bears all the time right. <laughs> and people see bears, but we all like, we, we sat my brother down and we're like, you tell us right now, was that a bear or what did you see? And he was like, no, no, it was, it was shoulders, like a head and shoulders. And we were like, okay, <laughs> it's my brother right what are you gonna you know? and, and now do you guys talk about this experience together or is it kind of like some people oh, yeah. okay yeah, yeah for sure you guys have theories you've been listening to more stuff you've been diving because this this stuff will send you off the it'll it'll send you down the rabbit hole and you'll never be the same oh yeah i i mean i dabble in all the i love the giant stuff you know we were i was raised on the bible so i know a lot of the giant stories out of the bible and it's crazy, like just just all the things happening right now in the world. It's just a lot of things happening, and it's all coming, kind of coming to light. Oddities, the oddities are going on around the world right now. Yeah. yeah. And the more you dig, the more it's like, it, you know, doesn't make sense. Doesn't, Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Do you think the the so you listen to the podcast clearly? I mean, yeah. we you know we think Bigfoot has some part of Nephilim something connected to it yeah what do you think do you think that's uh are we off there are you in no i think i think i mean that that kind of makes sense to me they're very i i'm sure they're very intelligent i mean just not being able to be caught and being very elusive and you know with with the the telepathy thing that my friend went through you know if they can speak to you and definitely you know could be in a an old an old species that was left on the earth or species that came here then they you know maybe they were being hunted down by by men and they just had to tuck out in the woods and they're still there today yeah from all the shows and episodes we've done there's something that these entities know about time and that technology mm-hmm. they have the ability to tap into it uh, my last podcast we interviewed a guy who flew through a wormhole he was a pilot that um it's kind of an interesting story, off topic a little bit, but he he was a pilot that flew from the you know the Bahamas and the Caribbean to to Miami, South Florida, and one day you know he's like it's an, usually an hour and a half flight. I got there in twenty minutes. I flew through this wormhole, and then I and then I was past Miami when I came out of it. And uh, and a lot of people say that's what happens in the Bermuda Triangle. These ships just sail through. They ne- they ne- they're never found. Where do they go? They just go right through a wormhole, and they're in somewhere else. Maybe people in the woods they walk right through a wormhole. And, and you yeah. see some of these ancient megaliths, Luke, where they got doorways. They look, and mm-hmm. they're in the rock, and they're carved out. And like, what are they? Do they just go right through? Remember when Derek was talking about that megalith in the mountains of Peru? It was like a doorway in the mountain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot more that we don't know. Yeah, about than I think that we do know about. And I think that's what I love about what we do is we get a chance to talk about these unexplained things and just try to wrap our heads around them. And and in some ways, just put them out there. Right? We talked about this at the very beginning. Like, like we just we love having having you on Adam and have people like you come on and tell your stories so that people can understand this just happens to, to people yeah. all the time. It's not just Rob Lowe. It doesn't just happen to celebrities, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I like to share it too, because you'd be surprised, you know, when you share, when you share your story, all of a sudden you get some random person is like, yeah, that, you know, that should happen to me too, or this happened. Right. And you know, that was like this time and you're like, well, okay, see, like, you know, you'd be surprised how, how many things do happen and nobody talks about it. Yeah. The amount of sightings that get reported are probably just few and far between because you have to have a certain type of personality to to say, no, this is what I saw. And uh, yeah. a lot of people don't want to face the criticism. But um, any last thoughts? Any any last um, final conclusions? No, I'm, I mean, I'm just going to, you know, keep telling my story and if if i encounter more stuff it's just gonna add to it and i'd love i'd love to definitely gonna go back up i mean we go up there all the time so bring a camera <laughs> yeah, get a blurry get a blurry creature shot yeah, yeah get a blurry <laughs> no, photo. If you, but if something does happen this we'll just consider this your debut on blurry creatures and we'll bring it back for the uh the follow-up but yeah keep us posted for sure for sure 
Yeah. Adam, thanks so much. I mean, like I said before, this is like a, a golden experience. You got six or seven phenomenon happening all within the same encounters. Quite incredible. And I and I find your story, I, I believe you, honestly, 100%. I know that you guys experienced something out of the ordinary. And it's, it's, it's really giving me a lot of thoughts about time mm-hmm. because that's mm-hmm. the part of the Bigfoot stuff that I have not really thought about. In the last couple of days after interviewing Tony, I've been thinking a lot about time. And I love that movie Interstellar. And it's it's a lot of that, like they're interacting, you know, the, the bookcase is moving and the books are falling off. It's all happening at the same time, you know, and the Bible talks a lot about this, Luke, like where the past, the present and future, it's kind of like God is is omni, omnipresent. Yeah. Where it's omnipresent like, is he's everywhere at once. But for us, we're kind of stuck in this, this linear progression. Yeah, yeah. We're very, we're very straight lining it. And uh, maybe Bigfoot has that ability to, you know, see everything and and uh, feel everything, or at least bend it, right? Yeah, yeah. He's in control. He's in control of it, or at least, or at least pass between dimensions. I mean, that may be the easiest explanation for why he disappears. Tim Alberino would be really mad at yeah. you right now for saying that, Luke. Tim, I love Tim. <laughs> he can be, he can be mad, and we can when I can say I don't know about you know battles on Mars, and we can disagree. <laughs> no, I mean, he just says you can't just say dimensions and just wave the magic wand, mm-hmm. and we don't even know what that means, uh, right? Well, I, I mean, I think it also well. Yeah, uh, we talk about we talk about dimensions, realms, whatever you want to talk about. I mean, I always go back to the fact that Paul Paul tells us that what we what's unseen is more real than what's seen, and so I hold on to those truths. And though there's a lot that we don't understand, and there's a lot that we don't see, and it doesn't mean that it's not not more real, and also doesn't, yeah. mean it doesn't happen. That's the beauty of this show is it's so many different spectrums from all the guests, and uh, it's great to you know you just draw your own con- conclusion from there, all right? Yeah, we appreciate it, man. Yeah, we really Adam. do. And yeah. um, if you have any uh, welcome, any updates or any of the weird stuff, seriously, take a camera with you. I mean, I'd love to go out in the middle of the night, even though I don't want to be in then. I don't want the only thing between me and Bigfoot, a little thin thin piece of nylon, though. <laughs> yeah. I want me a hefty log cabin at least, right, Luke? Or have a firearm. That's, that's <laughs> always my default. Just bring my AR. <laughs> yeah. I'll be... <laughs> Well, I just love to see these lights, man. I'm, I'm jealous you got to see those things. They sound, it's, it's just, it sounds like a, uh, before I, before I go, man, maybe we'll see them tomorrow night, Luke. It's possible. Try to yeah. Yeah, do some, do some signaling and play around a bit. You'd be surprised. Nate, Nate's going to bring his guitar and sing. We're going to, we're going to, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to brush off the old, uh, the old Sherwood, uh, Disco- discography, <laughs> and I'm going to have him play a little bit. See, we'll see if Bigfoot and the, and the or so the Giants enjoy some some vintage Sherwood. Luke's got to sing though. Yeah, I'll just play. Yeah. That's, that's going to clear out the whole forest. <laughs> I love it, man. Well, again, thanks so much for coming on and uh, keep us updated. For sure. Thanks for sharing it first with us, and and I'm going to be thinking about this for a couple of weeks at least. This is a good one. Head scratcher. Mm-hmm. Thanks, brother. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it, man. Well, just when you think you kind of understand what's going on in the world and and the cryptid space, it just gets weirder, more confusing. Welcome to where I was, and I was like, Luke, we got to do this show because I got to learn more, and I'm going to be learning more anyways. And that's one thing I want to say is, is like, if you're listening to this podcast, like, understand what Luke and I are doing is we're learning as you're learning, and that's the way we're doing this show. And we hope you guys have been enjoying it. If you want to, if you've seen something or had crazy experience you can't explain you can send us a message at blurry creatures on social media or blurry creatures podcast at gmail.com uh, leave us a review give us that five star perk luke up for the day make him feel good and get us up in those algorithms that really helps give a little warm and just give us a little warm fuzzy feeling in our bellies give us that five star <laughs> yeah and send, feel free to send message you're getting a lot of messages from you guys lately and we really appreciate that it kind of keeps us going and we're working again on Launching our website soon. It's going to have a members area where you can get discounts on merchandise and you can get exclusive content. Because you guys sent us a lot of content, and I thought that'd be a great place to post some of this stuff, like, you know, these videos and photos and other things you guys have created. I think we're going to create a little space, a little back end area, members only on our website. You can be a part of that, help support the show, and help Luke and I get to that point where we're treasure hunting That's right. all the time. That's right. And if we don't come back from the mound, it's been a good run, Nate. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. Come on, brother. Yeah. Thanks, guys. 